Elvis Costello was inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame last night in New York City. He was given the honor by none other than Marcus Mumford of Mumford & Sons, who talked about Elvis's impact. My hero, and I'm very proud to say my friend, um, but he knows so many chords, it's a nightmare. Um, <laughs> anyway, it's, uh, it's great to be able to uh, uh, sing a great song written by one of my musical idols and a legend of the world of recorded music. And now, of course, to induct him into this Songwriters Hall of Fame that you've got going on, where he has long belonged. You should get him to build an extension because he's got so many great songs. It's hard to grow up in the UK um, and ignore the looming legend of Elvis Costello. Nearly four decades ago, one of the most fascinating artists to emerge from what was called the British punk or new wave musical movement made his album debut with My Aim Is True. This is his real name, Declan Patrick McManus. I only found that out recently. Um, anyway, he's known as Elvis Costello and he's iconoclastic. He looked like Buddy Holly and adored George Jones, Burt Bacharach and American R&B. Growing up, as the son of a father who was a big band vocalist and musician, Elvis has always been steeped in jazz and standards as well. He emerged as part of a scene, but the quality of his songs always transcended mere fashion. He's also a shining example of the great British export, becoming as popular amongst you bloody Yanks as he even is at home. <laughs> the list of his musical collaborators is long and legendary, from Paul McCartney, George Jones, Alan Toussaint, Jimmy Cliff, Burt Bacharach, T-Bone Burnett, and Marcus Bloody Mumford himself. <laughs> I know. Just as impressive are the artists who have chosen to record Elvis Costello songs. Linda Ronstadt, Roy Orbison, Chet Baker, Johnny Cash, Roger McGuinn, among many more. When I got the honor of writing and recording with him for the new Basement Tapes, I was blown away not just by his knowledge of chords, um, but by his humility and his originality and the unerring joy with which he approached being a songwriter. He opened the event with a false start and got to pump it up for Declan. We're going to start in a minute, <laughs> but I'm just going to do a quick bit of stand up. <laughs> now we're going to start now. One. Elvis graciously accepted, and he thanked his I wife. Am, if nothing else, persistent. <laughs> I honestly did start out with the intention of being a backroom songwriter. So I have to be grateful to all of the music publishers who thoughtfully sent back my demo tapes, because this forced me out of my bedroom and made me raise my most argumentative voice and stand up for my own songs. The next thing I knew, I was on a three-buck ticket at the Riviera Theatre in Chicago, opening up for Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. A year later, I was hiding behind a fake plastic palm tree with Nile Rodgers, watching a group of local girls lip-sync their big hit on Dutch television. We knew that either the attractions in me or Chic would have to follow those girls, and we simply didn't stand a chance. But then it's never seemed to be my job to write a song just like the last hit, either mine or anyone else's. Instead, I've had, as Marcus told you, the wonderful experience of dreaming a song in the voice of Johnny Cash, or the voice of Roy Orbison, of George Jones, of Solomon Burke, Dusty Springfield, or Chet Baker, and to have them sing my dream back to me. Most of my songs have been written alone for me to sing, they have been my only companions in easy, uneasy hours, but I should like to acknowledge Linda Ronstadt and Peter Asher for having introduced, for having introduced my song, Allison, 
to the American public. I wasn't very gracious about it at the time because I was too possessive about my songs. But that recording and the royalties that it generated kept... <laughs> it kept the gas in our tour bus while I got to state my case, of which I'm certain. I'd, uh, I'd, 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 I'd like also to um, acknowledge the lessons in, in grace and measure that I took from working with Alain Toussaint and the mysteries of intimate drama that I've come to understand as I continue to work to this day with Bert Bacharach. Um, I completed, uh, yes, 20 songs we have that are unpublished and unrecorded. Uh, I completed a book last year in which I wrote down a lot of the things that I learned from my father while I was watching him sing in the dance hall and at the radio broadcast theater. But it was my mother who raised me to understand that no fear or heartbreak could harm me if I could put it into words and speak or indeed sing it out loud. Therefore, I would like to credit her with the fact that I was able to write about how young men might be put into an army uniform and do other people's dirty work and shoot people with whom they had no quarrel. That song, Oliver's Army, was actually a pretty big hit. It's because of Lillian's advice that I was able to tell the story of Veronica, my grandmother's struggle with Alzheimer's, and write that song with Paul McCartney and somehow smuggle it onto the radio and into the charts. And there are many, many more songs, that is. Not really any hits, but songs, you know. <laughs> um, I've always believed that there is more time and you must just hold your nerve and wait for your moment. Just this morning, I was sent a newly discovered cassette demo recording of a 15th song co-written 25 years ago with Paul McCartney that we both assumed had been lost, and it's pretty good too. And I stand here tonight having just arrived back from a European tour in which I premiered nine of 17 brand new songs that are written for a stage musical adaptation of Bud Schulberg's short story, A Face in the Crowd, which my collaborators and I will hear read for the first time tomorrow morning. I guess it's true. I guess it's true. The future lies ahead. I look to my friends who are here tonight, my family, my children, and most of all, to my beautiful wife, Diana. I will never be a good enough songwriter to tell her how much I love her. And I know I'm a very lucky man to do what I do. And I thank you very much. He then went into a heartfelt rendition of his most well-known hit, Allison. When I hear the silly things that you say I think somebody better put out the big light Cause I can't stand to see you this way Others inducted on June 9th included Nile Rogers, Tom Petty, and the late Marvin Gaye. <laughs> 